in that talk that that got clipped on, there was just a lot of like complaining. Like just complaining and complaining. So by the time I got to the 18th question, I'm like, I'm like, you guys are so entitled. Imagine horrible things. Cause horrible things do happen. As we sat here during this podcast, some bad things happen to people that is sad. They lost someone they loved. Like bad stuff. And like, you know, I, I think, I don't know how not to think about that. Like there's almost a billion people on earth that don't have access to clean water. Do you know how insane that is? Like, like I don't know, I don't, I don't know how not to, I don't know how to unsee that. There is literally 780 million people right now, predominantly in Africa and parts of India and parts of Asia, that literally within a 12 hour window can't get to a cup of fresh water. And then I have to listen to DMs about like, why don't I don't have a million dollars? Yeah. Like I just don't, like, do you understand that every human being that's in Las Vegas right this minute for this week should fucking kiss the ground and be fucking thankful as fuck? They have nothing to complain about in real eight billion people in life. But that's not how life works. You live in your little reality and when shit goes awry within your reality, it's annoying because you have it so good and you haven't contextualized the macro perspective of how remarkable you're. There's no human watching this clip right now that doesn't have it awesome. Yeah. But many think they have it horrible. And especially with the way mainstream media and content creators on social media are talking, everyone's looking at the downside without looking at the upside. Imposter syndrome. Somebody with- AKA the, the new funny word that we've made it. Imposter syndrome, I'm sorry to interrupt. Imposter syndrome, you mean what we used to call insecurity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The packaging of insecurity as imposter syndrome has me laughing my ass off and I'm glad I got to finally address it. I don't, I've said it maybe one other place. Like, yes, what about insecurity? I was gonna say, <laughs> I was gonna say in your very like early stages like YouTube and you're taking your- Never, your, your not in this game, ethic, no. And putting Never. it out there. In Never, the, in not the, that, the not that. The, Hitting on girls in high school, yes. I know what insecurity looks like, but not in business. Okay. The, day, the day I did that Social first video, you ready for this? The day I did that first video, in my head, driving home, I said to myself, I'm gonna fucking win this. I'm gonna be known. I'm gonna be the most important in wine business. Literally, first one. Because I knew I was gonna grind it. I don't know if I'm gonna buy the New York Jets. You know why? I'm not fully in control. But I know I'm gonna give it a real fucking run. Right. You know, if, if the Johnsons put it up for sale tomorrow, I'm out. I just don't have enough money yet. Mm. But if they hold on to it in the range that I think they'll hold on to it, 18, 20, 16, 24 years, I'm in the mix. I believe that to be true. So you're saying your foundation, your cloth, was built as this world of social media, comments, seeing negativity was there but like as this stuff transpired and transcended into what is to what? In high school, no one's opinion or peer pressure even remotely came to penetrate the way I walked around. I think that's the toughest environment. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know it. This is fun to say as a 48 year old man. In my late 20s, mid 30s, when I started being like, whoa, I was a weird kid in high school. I was friends with everyone. That was based on me not caring that my cool friends were making fun of me for hanging out with my not cool friends. I didn't care. I wasn't willing to compromise on kindness. In the 90s, in New Jersey, in high school, there was no way to get to the upper echelon of popularity without being a dick face. You had to make fun of people. It just was the currency. I wasn't willing to go there. And. That, did you learn, where'd you learn that? Like, how'd you have that? How'd my, you mom, that my, mom, my mom, my mom, my mom, my mom. Because it's like everybody deals with it. I, I could even think of myself being like, damn, you see somebody talk shit about how you played in the game. I'm thinking I'm in my 20s at this point. But in high school, that stuff, I'm just trying to imagine somebody that's just uncompromised. I'm very much. I'm detached from results, even though I want them. Mm-hmm. Meaning, when someone says stuff, I'm just, first of all, there's a lot to it. Let's break it down. Let's because we're bouncing. People shitting on you in social media should not be met with you being upset for you. It should be met with you being compassionate to them. Do you know how fucking sad a life is that you walk around the internet and make fun of people or try to hurt people because you're in such a bad place? Saying that you guys suck at this podcast is a little endorphment hit for that person for a nanosecond to feel better about how bad they feel about themselves. All they're doing is tearing you down. 
They're just misery loves company you. I swear to God, every single negative post that I see about me or in the comments, I literally, my brain fundamentally only says, man, I hope that person's gonna be okay one day. Not one thing about me. That has nothing to do with me. Um, But there's a key to that. I also don't take in when people give me the flowers. I'm appreciative as fuck. Bro, that shit, if I could, if we could get the kids, fucking forget the kids, everyone who's watching this, every grown up to understand, if you become susceptible to the fucking cheering, you're dead, because the booing will kill you. I'm grateful for when people leave goat emojis. I'm fucking, gr- I, mean, you can, I wish you could see what I felt like with your opening line on the show. It's like, thank you, so, it's so nice, but I don't think I'm special because you said it. Which means I don't think I'm a piece of shit when you say the return. Mm-hmm. I know who I am, the end. And unless you really, 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 really know me, how the fuck can I even count it? Mm-hmm. Do you know me famous people that are universally adored are straight pieces of shit? Probably a lot. Yeah, you always hear the stories you never want to meet your heroes. Right. It's real talk. So far, it sucks. I mean, like, you, like, currently right this second, universally adored. They're the best. No, they're not. They sure aren't. They do not treat their people well. Everybody that's close to them does not love them. I can go to sleep every night and put my head on a pillow because the more you know me, the more you like me, those are the results I see. Work-life balance is almost non-existent, but just if you're trying in all phases, you're phenomenal. I think so. What's work-life balance? Everyone has their own rules. Mm -hmm. Like I have friends that think work-life balance is nine to five, Monday through Friday, okay. Like, I have other friends that think it's nine to seven, Monday through Friday, okay. I have other friends that think it's nine to nine, Monday through Saturday, okay. Like, as long as the people in your circle are cool with it, like there's all sorts of, there's, there's a cost to everything. There's just real life circumstances. Like, the big thing that I focus on is when I talk about shit, I'm not trying to tell everyone that I'm right about what I'm talking about. I'm not trying to convince anyone. I'm trying to share observations with the hope that it helps someone. That's a very different framework. I don't think the thing I talk about is applicable to everyone. That's insane. I just think that I love observing and have been doing it for a long time. I don't even talk from my framework. Most of the stuff that comes out of my mouth is not just me, It's what I've lived in combination to what I've observed for the last 30 years because that's what I do for a living. I pay attention for a living. That's why I have an advertising firm. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm interested in the collective, but that will never be the reflection of an individual. Uh, Gen Z, when people are like, Gen Z suck. I'm like, are you a fucking idiot? Do you know how many Gen Z kids I know right now are grinding their asses off and have incredible work ethic? And do you know how many lazy boomers I know? To just blanket paint these observations is wild. Are there rationales to why there's general statements? Sure. Are those things sometimes like pretty close to under those? Sure, like I get it. But like nothing is directly one by one. Mm -hmm. That goes to one on one, you with you. Mm -hmm. Only you know. And you have to make yourself happy because you can't make anyone else happy unless you're happy. That's real.